Hello everybody. It is Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I've been stamping and making cards with Stampin' Up! for over 10 years, but making cards for a whole lot longer than that. And my goal is to simply spread joy one card at a time. Um, I'm sharing with you tonight a video card tutorial um, because one of my goals is to help you see or find your own creativity as we're working through um, the layout of a card. I will provide you with measurements and instructions and hopefully it's something that you'll be able to recreate. Tonight I am going to share with you a Father's Day card, retirement day card, kind of a more masculine type card featuring the Gone Fishing um, stamp set and dies. Really excited to be sharing this set. Hey Julie, thanks for joining in. Um, to be um, sharing this suite of, of products, just making sure I'm in the right spot on my Facebook account. Yep, there I am. Good. Um, I've been waiting for this set to arrive. I didn't order things right away when the new catalog came out because I had nowhere to store it, but my window is in and um, I've got most everything put away now in my new layout and am happy to be able to start ordering things and adding to my collection. So this Gone Fishing was first on my list. And this is just an amazing set of stamps and dies. And I am not going to talk a whole lot longer here. I'm just going to flip over. Um, excuse the jiggling while I do that. And we're going to get started right away on the card here. Just a second. All right, hopefully I've got my phone pretty well situated. That's not bad for the first time there. I don't even think I'm going to mess with it a whole lot. I'm going to open up some of my stamp space, get rid of my camera stand there, and add a little bit more sunlight or bright light to what we're working on here. So let me go ahead and... Um, show you this amazing stamp set. It is found on page 78 and 79 in the new annual catalog. And it's the Let's Go Fishing suite of products. Right now I have um, the paper and the stamps and the dies. I have not gotten the embossing folder yet. Um, I just really, really wanted to get these stamps. <laughs> that was my big concern when I placed my order. So the dies are super cool. You can create a tackle box. Wasn't quite ready to go there given that my stamps just arrived on um, Saturday and I needed a little bit of time to play with them to make that tackle box work. But there's just some really cool things. And even though I'm billing this as a masculine set, if you've got people that are crafty, um, you could use this tackle box. There's another stamp set that we have in the catalog that actually has the big shot in it and um, the cutting plate and stuff like that. I think you could do some pretty cool crafting storage things with this as well. Not to mention that there's a lot of um, females that like to fish too. So I am building this tonight as a masculine card because the people that are going to receive these cards are masculine. But keep your eyes open because I think there's some other things that you can do, especially with this toolbox type die um, that you can create on that. I, I envision crafting supplies, probably because I've been so busy sorting mine lately with all the housework that's been done. So anyhow, last week my cards really focused on the designer series paper because if you remember, I did not have the stamp set. So instead I made a couple cards that just focused on our designer series paper. This week I am using the stamps and dies starting to use them. There's still so much more that can be done in front of this. Um, but the card that I'm making could be either a um, Father's Day card or a retirement card. I'm actually making one of both because I need both occasions. And one of the other things I'm doing that's really cool is I am featuring one of the new products that we can get to go with our Picket Tool. And that is this number nine right here on page 145. It's the Take Your Pick Crafter Tips, and it comes with a utility blade and some hook type picks, but it also comes with this cool rotary cutter right here. And what this does is create a perforation mark, so it adds a little bit of detail, um, but it doesn't cut your paper. So I'm gonna show you how that works, and I might've just found my new favorite tool. 
because when I first started doing this, I was creating the card we're making tonight. I created a template and um, hand wrote my dashes for like stitch lines. And then I went, wait a minute, I've got something else I can use. And you guys, it's really cool. Really, really cool. So let's jump right in. Here is the card I'm going to show you how to make. Now, I um, initially found this card. It was designed, I'm trying to find where my measurements are because it's got the name. Um, it was from a demonstrator car Carol Caroline, named Carolina Evans. And she was using one of our older kind of fishy, fishing themed stamp sets. And I saw her card and I thought, yes, that's exactly what I want to do. I did modify it a little bit to make it a full four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. And um, I've updated it with our tools. And then I created this belly band, which is kind of like the strap on, a, strap on a life jacket, just to hold things together. Now, one of the things I wish I had done was put my inside sentiment just a little bit lower so that it didn't show there, but it still works. So I am going to show you how to make this card tonight. And like I said, the belly band slips off. You do need to be careful of the lures so it doesn't get caught on the hooks and stuff. But when you open it up, then you've got a full size card and a place to write and make your notes. So I was really pleased with the modifications I made and how it turned out. Um, but again, the basic idea came from a demonstrator by the name of Carolina Evans. So to make this card, I'm going to pull all my pieces out here and then I will give you measurements. And let me, sorry, my dog is down here tonight wanting to play ball. So you may hear him running around every once in a while. All right, I want to make sure I've got all of my pieces. The dies that come with the set are really cool. Um, maybe I should show you that too before I do the measurements. So here's the stamp set called Gone Fishing. So it's got some really nice sentiments. Um, I like the Happy Retirement and I like the Happy Father's Day. Um, and I think um, this is so fitting with the fishing thing because sometimes you really have to wait. And it's a lot of two-step stamping. You can kind of see that um, to create lures as well as some colorful fish. A little bit of a background stamp. Um, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to use that yet, but that's not to say anything. Photopolymer stamp set, so easy to do your two-step stamping. And then the dies that come with it. Let me pull it out of the case here. Um, it includes like this little wave so you could stamp layers and create a wavy background. The base of your tackle box and then kind of the trays in the tackle box. Um, these are water rings for the fish to be jumping out of or jumping back into. Um, lots of pieces to go with the lures. This will actually cut out one of the fish that's on the designer paper. Um, bobbers, the metal things on bobbers. Um, fly fishing. It's just a really fun set. I can't wait to kind of dive in and use this one a little bit more as we go through. So the dies are also called Gone Fishing. Um, just a really cool suite if you're looking for a fun little card that maybe is not quite typical of what you do. So the measurements for this card, um, the card base is five and a half by eight and a half. And you would score it at two and one eighth and six and three eighths. You could also score it at two and one eighth, rotate it and score it at two and one eighth again if you wanted to do that. Same thing. And basically, we're creating a fun, um, kind of a fun fold card with that. And then to um, put on the inside of the card, it is four by five and a quarter. And then um, I have used the pebble pebbled path for the pockets on this one and I have four squares that measure one and a half inches by one and a half inches. The life jacket belt is um, nine and a half inches by a quarter inch and then the buckle is roughly three-eighths of an inch long by a quarter inch wide 
And then I basically used basic white scraps to create the um, lures that I'm going to use. I did go ahead, just because it's going to take me a little longer to walk through this card, I think. I went ahead and um, pre-stamped and die cut those. But like I said, they're all two-step images and they're quite easy um, to line up. I think this was probably the most challenging for me to get the die lined up. But that makes it a little more rewarding in the end when it does come out looking pretty good. And then I've cut just a few pieces out of some silver foil um, for the metal pieces of the dies. Um, the, I will let you know too that I also um, this weekend adopted two new kittens and it looks like one of them has come downstairs. So if I all of a sudden jump up because she starts eating a an electrical cord, you'll know why that happened. But let's go ahead and get started on making the card. The first thing that I want to show you how to do is um, lining up things on this card. Um, so again, five and a half by eight and a half scored at two and an eighth and six and three eighths. And then what I did is I took my scoring tool and um, just made a little tick mark with a pencil at the one inch mark on both ends. So it just went in an inch here and an inch here. And then I rotated it so on the edge, I had a mark that measured one, one and a half inches and then again I flipped it over so that I have a mark here at one and a half inches as well. Loki, leave it. Um, excuse me one minute. Okay, sorry about that. That was a Getting, getting in trouble. Um, then um, that's just to help me figure out where to fold down the corners of the life jacket. So that's all that that is for. And I did it in pencil so that I can easily erase it when I am all done making my card. So what I'm going to do is line up my score lines by having that tick mark in the gutter here and then this tick mark also in the gutter. And I'm gonna take my scoring blade, not my cutting blade, and run that down here so that I can fold it over eventually. Nope, you can't help me. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing. My, the glare of my light is making it hard to see my tick marks. But I'm going to repeat that process here and run that through. And so that's going to show me where I need to score on those lines. And then the other thing that I need to do is um, cut just this corner tip of the card off to get the indentation or the cuts right here on that card. So this would be Zelda. She's one of two kittens that we adopted. They're about two months old. Came from a humane society nearby. Um, I'm hoping that she'll just sit up on my neck and you guys won't even know that she's there. And then, um, anyhow, I'm going to put my card down here so that the tip is at half inch mark on the cutter. And then I'm just going to slide through and cut the tip off. And I'll repeat that same step on this card. and kit, cut that tip off, and then that gets us those pieces. And that really is all of the prep work we need to do for the card base. And I can move my cutter out of the way. And so what we're gonna do is fold these two pieces in and We'll use our bone folder to burnish the edges real well. And then I'm just gonna flip over the corners of the life jacket here. And 
I did adhere mine down. Are you going to help me? Um, because I found that it actually kept them down flat, which is what I wanted. And so we go like that, and that kind of covers the front of it. What I want to do now is show you how to use this scoring tool because what I want is to make, and I don't know if you can see it on here, um, I want little stitch marks around the pocket. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Um, and so that's what our scoring tool is going to help us do is just make those nice even stitch marks. And I just wanted to do that around the edges of the pocket. So let me show you how easy it is to do that. Um, it does have a safety guard so this is not a sharp blade here and then you can just push it up and down like that and that opens it up this wheel isn't um, super sharp I'm able to touch it I wouldn't want a little kid holding it or anything like that oh come here um, but it is easy to use I did not put anything underneath my board to protect it I think you could use the cutting mat if you wanted to but I was kind of afraid that might be too soft so I'm just cutting right on my surface and lining it up on the edge where I want it and you just roll it down just like that and that's all it takes to get your marks oh and the dog is really jealous because I have the cat up here I don't have your ball you gotta go find it Loki whoops so I kind of went off edge on that that's all right Sometimes I sew that way too. <clears throat> and I'm just going to make my pocket marks. If you really wanted to have a straight line, you could probably pencil it in. <laughs> oh, can you tell a jealous dog here? It's okay, Loki. Where's your ball? I don't know where he left it and it doesn't matter all right so it cuts I'm not even pressing very hard to get that mark on my my fold let, let me get the dog upstairs here just a second come on go upstairs come on upstairs upstairs John can you get him one. Just shut the door. I'm so sorry about that. All right. He's now upstairs and won't be bugging us anymore. But that's all it takes to get those lines into um, these pieces of paper. So very easy and it adds just a very subtle a bit of detail to the card. I'm going to see if I can get it to focus on here instead of down here. Come on, camera. Maybe if I do that. There you go. So you can see how nicely it adds just a little bit of detail to your, your paper. Okay. So then from there, we can start assembling. So these are all two-step stamp. I used Real Red, Tahitian Tide, Granny Apple Green, and again, real red. And then the base color is the new Pebbled Path color. And what I found for the pockets, because I actually wanted the pocket to be able to have stuff slide into it. Um, when I was initially designing the card, I didn't know how I was going to attach things. So I glued these on just using a little bit of the liquid glue and put some right along the edges of three sides. It's square, so it doesn't really matter which three sides, and that allowed the pocket to stay open. And so I put the first one on on the bottom half because it kind of gave me a good sense of placement. Um, and I actually did lay them all out before I glued them down with the first card that I made. And so again, you just need to put glue on three sides 
and I placed this one pretty even with that. I am just eyeballing it so it's not perfect. And then I'm repeating that process for the upper two pockets. You could probably also run these pockets through, and if you know if you don't have this tool yet, although I highly recommend it, um, through an embossing folder and get kind of a textured. A lot of times these are sort of mesh-like, so you could get kind of a texture put on your pockets too if you chose to do that. And there we go. Oops, that's a little bit high. Yikes. Okay. So there is that. Um, one thing I am going to do before I go a whole lot further is make the inside sentiment. This one I'm going to turn into a retirement card. Um, I do usually try to do my sentiments first, any stamping, so that I know the ink is dry before I start working with it. And on this one, I am going to eyeball it a little bit differently because I don't want it to show through at the neckline. And so I know I want it about here. And that's all the further I'm working on the measurement part of it in terms of lining it up. And as long as it doesn't show, I'm happy. So happy retirement on the inside. Okay, quick clean that off on my chamois so I don't get ink on other stuff and now I'm just gonna assemble and add the inside pieces here and for the silver I'm just I am tucking it into the pocket but I'm gonna put just a little bit of adhesive in the back of it and tuck it in the pocket so it'll stay there and then for the others, I have popped all of my lures up onto dimensionals um, just so that they stand out a little bit more, um, add a little bit of detail to the front of the card. And so we'll just attach them with the dimensionals. When I was assembling this card yesterday, I spent a lot of time trying to get my colors to work out, way more time than I needed to. Um, I would advise you not to worry too much about that. And I love the detail on this particular piece of the lure with the little indentations. Um, they're not quite cuts, but almost on the that lure, kind of like a cheese grater. I think that's kind of cool. So I'm gonna just attach that there. And I will put this one, I added a little mini dimensional to the tail piece. And we'll put that there. And then uh, I've got this lure. These spoons always remind me of ones we used to use. Ours had spots on them. Um, and they were usually like a chartreuse green kind of color. Back when I used to fish at the cabin. I think we had white ones maybe with red dots. I don't remember for sure. And then we've got a little feather for the fly fish lure. And I'm just going to attach that one here. And that covers the basics of the card. We'll add some adhesive to do on the inside here. And then the last thing we need to do is assemble the belly band. Um, this is a very narrow strip. It's more an art part of the band. <laughs> um, it does hold it together, but obviously it's only a quarter inch thick, so it is going to be a little more fragile. So you do want to kind of watch out for the lures and stuff too, so it doesn't get caught. What's the matter, Zelda? I love little kitty meows, don't you? All right, 
So to make this part, I don't pre-score my, my folds, but I do always make the seam be in the front because I'll cover it up with whatever my focal point is. <laughs> no, you can go away. You're not helping. So back down to the floor you go. Um, we just picked these kittens up. She's got a sister too that is got a little more white on her than she has. But we just picked them up Friday night, so they're still kind of acclimating to the house. All right, so I just fold my belly band over kind of like this. And like I say, I work to make sure that my focal point will cover the seam. I'm not quite sure I'm going to get there tonight with this one. There we go. I've got some adhesive on there. But I think it'll be close enough that it works. This is like the strap on a, a life vest. So there's always going to be a little that hangs out on the buckle, right? We'll make it work. And if not, we'll justify it to make it work. Okay. And then I'm just going to put the black buckle kind of right in the middle there. Um, one thing that I could do, if that really bothers me, which I have to admit it kind of does, I'm just going to come through here and trim it right next to the buckle. And it feels like I did just cut the adhesive off too, so I'm going to run a little more. And there we go. Now it's crooked. Okay. Belly bands shouldn't be that difficult. I made it a little harder than it needed to be, but there is our belly band, which forms the buckle of the life jacket. And that takes care of it. I thought about adding a little wink of Stella, um, but the silver really takes care of the shiny stuff that you would have in fishing. And since this is going to be more of a masculine card, I thought, no, I'm not going to do anything sparkly on it. So here are the two versions of my card. This is the Happy Father's Day with a crumb cake base, um, card base using the um, Pebbled Path ink for the pockets, the belly band, and the ink on this. And it just says Happy Father's Day on the inside. I'm probably going to change that out so that the stamped image can be a little bit lower. And then here is the same card turned into a retirement card using Mossy Meadow with the same um, lures. I'm guessing there's somebody out there that can tell me that one of these is a life vest for this kind of fishing using the colors that I've got. And probably using the tan is a different kind of life vest for a different kind of fishing. Um, if you do know that, just add it in the comments because I'm kind of curious to know that. I just did it because in my family we've had life vests both colors. <laughs> I liked how they looked. So this features the Gone Fishing stamp set and dies. And um, I'm really happy I could finally share this with you because I have been waiting a long time for my schedule to work out to actually be able to order the set and demonstrate it for you. Um, and then I also was really excited, like I said, to get this take your pick tool attachment with the rotary cutter to do those stitch designs. Um, I like to do some of those simple things that can add a little bit of wow to your, your card layouts. So there you go. We will see you all next week. Have a great week. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you later. Bye-bye.